I'm going to direct your attention this morning to Acts the first chapter. You are going to get a break from fasting this morning. Uh, I've preached for the last two Sundays on fasting and uh, one Sunday night. Uh, I hope, I hope with all my heart that you have taken the challenge to fast and pray before the Lord during the month of January. If you haven't already, I want to encourage you to do that. Uh, there was a fellow by the name of Naaman in the Old Testament who was a leper from Syria. And he went down to Israel on the advice of one of his servants to uh, find a cure. And the prophet came out and told him, listen, you just go down to the river and dip seven times and you will be made whole. And he became angry. He said, I thought you would come out and strike your hand over the place and, and uh, make it whole. You know, we have clean rivers back where I come from. This is a muddy river. Why would I want to dip down there? And his servant spoke to him and he said, Sir, if the prophet had asked you to do something hard, you would have done it. But he just asked you to go and dip and be clean. And he did humble himself, and he was cleansed. You know, the Lord asked us to fast and pray. There are times when we're asked to fast and pray in this life. Well, not pray, fast. If you're going to go for, if you're going to go for blood work, you have to fast. If you're going to have an operation, you have to fast. Do you think anything of it? No. It's just what you're supposed to do. Some, I've seen an operation put off from 9 o'clock in the morning till 6 o'clock in the evening, and the person ended up fasting from one night until the day after. They fasted for a day. Didn't kill them. Didn't even bother them, really, because... They were under orders. Well, the Lord Jesus Christ said, when you fast. The Lord Jesus Christ said, when the bridegroom is gone, the bride will fast. And so I want to say to you today, uh, if God had asked us to do something hard, you know, like go out and conquer something or do something terrible, we would have done it. But he asked us just to fast and pray. So I want to ask you today, listen to what the Lord Jesus Christ says. There are, there are things in your life that will not be resolved. There are burdens you are carrying that will not be lightened. There are, there are things in your family that will not be resolved. There are troubles and problems and difficulties and, and lack of understanding and especially lack of direction that will not be solved without fasting and prayer. And so I'm not going to preach on fasting this morning. I'm just going to encourage you to fast sometime in January. All right. Now, in the book of Acts, I want you to uh, look there with me for just a moment. I want us to look this morning at the last thing that Jesus said uh, before he left this earth. And now most of the time, you know, the, the, the last thing that somebody says is very, very important. And uh, so... Here's Jesus in the first chapter of the uh, Acts of the Apostles. And I, and I want you to know this is recorded in more than one place. And we're going to look at it in the book of Acts. And we're going to look at it in the book of Matthew. And we're going to put those things together and see what God has to say to us this morning. All right, let's have a word of prayer for just a moment. Father, we ask you as we go into your word that your Holy Spirit would speak this morning. Lord, that you would bring power and conviction into this place. Lord, if there are people here who are lost, we pray that you would speak to their hearts about their need for the Savior, Jesus, and the promise of forgiveness in new life. Lord, I pray for your people here this morning that we would hear your voice and willingly say yes to you. For it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, 
the Bible speaks to us about the, the resurrection ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ here in the first chapter of Acts. And in the third verse of the first chapter of, the, of Acts, he says, to whom also he showed himself, that's Jesus Christ showed himself, after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, he asked of them, saying, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be my witness, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Now I want you to go with me over to Matthew the 28th chapter. Now, these are not conflicting texts. These are not conflicting texts because Matthew recorded uh, what the Holy Spirit indicated for him to record, and Luke recorded what the Holy Spirit in indicated for him to record, and uh, I believe both of them were present at the time. He says here in Matthew, the 28th, and... Uh, when the eleven disciples went away into Galilee into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them, and when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you alway, even unto the end of the world. Now let me read the two together. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you alway, even unto the end of the world. I believe that those things were said on the mountain before Jesus was taken up into glory. Now, I want us to look at these passages together. You know, the first thing that Jesus says here that we have recorded is he said, uh, I, I want you to uh, wait for the promise of the Father, which you've heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Now, aren't you just, uh, now listen, I don't know about you, but I am thrilled in my heart that I don't have to wait for the promise of the Holy Spirit. You see, when I got saved, I received the Holy Spirit of God into my life. And I, and I didn't have to wait for, uh, for, I didn't get saved and then someday or that night or the next day or a week from then or, or a year from then I received the Holy Spirit because the Bible says those that don't have the Spirit of God don't belong to Him. And you don't have the Spirit of God in you naturally. God has to come and live in you by the Holy Spirit. And when you get saved, when you truly get saved, you get the Holy Spirit of God in your life. Praise God. You know, we ought to just 
just get happy about that, that the Lord God himself came to live inside of us. In fact, the Bible tells us over there in, in, uh, in John, the, the 14th chapter, 15th chapter, it tells us that Jesus said, you keep my commandments and my Father and I will come and we will make our abode in you. How did that happen? It happened because God is a spirit and, and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. And Jesus Christ has been glorified. And Jesus and the, and the Bible calls the Holy Spirit the spirit of Jesus and the spirit of God. They come, the trinity of God comes to dwell in us by the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Now, folks, that's good news. You know, when there, whenever these guys, these guys, you know, we were reading in Mark this morning, and Jesus told them very plainly, look, we're going down to Jerusalem. And the Son of Man is going to suffer many things. And he's going to be killed. And he's going to rise again the third day. And the very next verse says, but they did not understand what he said to them. Sometimes we walk in a lack of understanding that the Holy Spirit of God has come to live in us. Jesus spoke very plainly to them, and they did not understand. The Word of God speaks very plainly to us, and many times we walk as if we don't understand that God Himself has come and set up His throne in our lives. Oh, yes, we have a choice. Jesus can rule and sit on the throne of our lives, or we can sit and rule on the throne of our lives, but we cannot get rid of the sealing of the Holy Spirit of God upon a person who has truly been saved and given their life to Jesus. Now, the Bible says here, now look at this, it says down here, the next thing he says is, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. I want you to know something. There are many things that I don't know exactly about. I'd like to know more about the millennial reign of the Lord Jesus Christ on the earth. I know according to the word, all the way through the word, I've been reading the Psalms this, this week, and I want you to know the, the, the Psalms are replete with, with references to Jesus coming to judge the nations. So your pastor believes that Jesus Christ, I, didn't, I never understood why, I, but I, you know, I'm reading it over and over now. I'm beginning to understand Jesus is coming to rule. I, I said, why would he want to reign on the earth? He wants to reign on the earth to judge the nations. Judgment is coming, folks. Hopefully you and I are going to be Ruling and reigning with him. If you're, if you're a believer, you'll be ruling and reigning with Christ. Now, he, but there are many things that we don't understand. I want to tell you something. You don't have to understand everything. But when there is an instruction that is given that is very clear, and you and I ignore it, then something's wrong in our hearts. And something's wrong in our spirit. Because we have said, yes, I know that God said this, but uh, I don't think I'm going to do that. Many things I don't, I don't understand, and I want to tell you something, I don't have to understand. In fact, I've said to people many times, they've asked me questions about the Bible, and I will say to them, the Bible doesn't tell us the answer to that question. <coughs> Excuse me. I can say to them with all confidence can i have that water i can i can say to them with all confidence i've read through the bible several times and the bible doesn't speak to that issue it doesn't tell us you know well who who married this person and where did they get this well if the bible wanted us to know it would tell us but it doesn't tell us so we're just gonna wait i had a fellow the other day who said you know all of you all you conservatives believe that uh People are going to continue to have children during the millennium. And I said, where did you get that? I said, the Bible doesn't tell us where the people are going to continue to have children during the millennium. So why would I speak to that issue? You say, well, it, it just seems, well, it seems to you, but you better speak what God says and not speak what, what isn't written down. 
And the same thing is true in our lives. There are things that God doesn't tell us. And we just have to wait for the understanding of that when the time comes. But there are things that the Lord tells us. And we don't need to be like the disciples that don't understand when He tells us plainly. Amen. Okay, so we're going to go to the next part here. He said, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Now for them, the Holy Ghost came upon them ten days later in the upper room on the day of Pentecost. But after that, every time they came up with a question, should we do this? You know, should we baptize these Gentiles? Well, they received the Holy Spirit just like us. Yes, let's baptize them. Yes, let's accept them. Why? Because God said they were going to receive the Holy Spirit. They did. Now they're part of us. Now I want to tell you something, folks. There are people that go to church all their lives, and they go without the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit of God. They go because it's a religious uh, obligation or because it makes them feel good to go to church and to sing songs and listen to the preacher, but they go without the fullness of the Holy Spirit in their lives. And if they're lost, they never have had the Spirit of the Lord in their life. And I want to say something to you here. The, the Bible is replete, replete with, with references to God that He says we can judge by their fruits. But I want to tell you something. God judges by the by his presence in your life. He said there are going to be people who are, going to, who are going to stand before him in the final day and they're going to say, didn't we cast out demons in your name and didn't we do this in your name? And he's going to say, depart from me, you cursed, you workers of iniquity because I never knew you. If God doesn't know us, that means we're not saved because we, we call salvation coming to know Jesus personally as our Lord and Savior somebody say amen you know uh, so he says here you're going to receive power at the Holy Ghost has come upon you and then he says something very distinct he says you're going to be my witnesses he didn't say and you can be your my witnesses if you want to did he say that you know, there's two things that people in the, in the church are really afraid of. I'm talking about solid fear, a phobia. People are afraid of fasting. That's one thing. I've already, I've already covered that subject. People are afraid of fasting. Okay? There's another thing that people are afraid of. They're afraid of speaking up for the Lord Jesus Christ. They're afraid of being a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. They're afraid even to tell their story. Now, we're not afraid to tell our story about anything else. You know, I talked to a, a fellow from India. I got to witness to him this week uh, over in Corpus. And, uh, and he is, he's working down at the uranium plant down there. And, and, uh, and, and uh, you know... Uh, We could be afraid to tell that person, hey, Jesus Christ changed my life. And He can change yours too. If, if you don't say anything else except Jesus is the strength of my life and He can help you too. You know, that's a witness. If we don't share any, any Scripture except John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, that means He loves you, that He gave His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that if you would put your faith and trust in Him, you would not perish, but you would have everlasting life. That's a witness from the Word of God. If we just say, no, I don't do that since I became a Christian. That's a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't just say, uh, no, I'd rather not. Hey, we're going, out for, we're going out for beer. Would you like to go with me? 
You don't just say, no, I'm busy tonight. You say, no, I let that go when I became a Christian. And God has filled me with peace. You know, the Bible says there's only two kinds of people you're supposed to give that to. Those that are dying. And those that are just absolutely depressed. God's people are not dying and they're not depressed. Amen? I hope they're not depressed. If they are depressed, they ought to get, get right with God. I mean, come to the... If you see God's face, there is, <clears throat> there is joy in the presence of the Lord. There is strength in the presence of the Lord. And so he comes here and he says, you're going to be my witnesses. Now he, he kind of spells it out. I want, I want to tell you something. I think that you and I, listen to me, I believe that you and I are living on one of the greatest mission fields in the whole world. Right here in Kingsville, Texas. People say, well, no missions are over there in, in Uganda. Missions are down there in Argentina. Missions are over there in China. Well, they are. But I want to tell you something. Missions are right here in Kingsville, Texas. Amen. The Bible says here, he says, I want you to be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem. Now, I wrote this down so I could remember all these things, but Jerusalem, that's Kingsville for us. Amen? They were in Jerusalem, so they were, the starting point was right where they were. Our starting point is Kingsville. It means, that, uh, it, it means the neighborhood in which you live. You are responsible for everybody in your neighborhood that you live in. Oh, don't put that on me, Brother Gary. Yeah, you're responsible for every person that lives in your neighborhood. You're responsible for every person you work with. You're responsible for every person you do business with. Uh, here we go. I'm going to beat that thing to death this morning. You say, Brother Gary, why don't you speak a little less directly to me? Why don't you just say, oh, you know... We ought to be witnesses. Listen, folks. If we, don't, if we don't recognize that Jesus said, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, if you're not saved, you don't have to be a witness. If you don't love God, you don't have to be a witness. If you don't believe the Word of the Lord Jesus Christ, you don't have to be a witness. But if you believe him, you've got a witness. And I want to tell you something. You won't just witness because you got to. You'll witness out of gratefulness that God has changed your life and set you free from the power of sin in your life. Oh, we ought to be so overflowing with the truth that God, what God's done in our life that nobody around us could ever escape that, that God has done something great in our life. He said, that I want you to witness in Jerusalem. Now, I want you to see something here. This is very interesting because uh, Jerusalem is our, is our Kingsville. Judea. Judea. He said in Judea. Now, that would be the surrounding area there of Jerusalem, right? And, and uh, uh, we have several towns around us as well. We've got We've got, uh, what's the name of that town just up the road there? Bishop, thank you very much. All right. You know where our, you know where our Judea is right now? It's in Hebronville. Our Judea right now is in Hebronville. Now, I believe God's going to do great things there. It's in the surrounding area. It's 58 miles from us and it's 58 miles from Laredo. And, uh, and God's going to do great things there. Judea. He said, I want you to go into Samaria. Now, Samaria were those strange people. They were the people who were different. Uh, you know, uh, they were, they, we could say that they were people from the north. You know how different those people from the north are? They talk funny. 
I went to a, I went to a conference up north, and, and, uh, and they had a speaker from the south. And when Brent and I walked out of, the, out of the auditorium, it was a large auditorium, and when we walked out, I could hear people all around me saying, I couldn't understand a word he said. <laughs> that wasn't the way they said it, but that's the way I say it. <laughs> They're different. They're different in religion. The Samaritans were different. Remember what the Samaritan woman said to, to uh, Jesus? She said, to him, well, we say over here in Gerizim, and, and you guys say over there in Jerusalem. And, and they're different. Samaritans are people who were alienated from the Israelites. They had interbreeded with other nations. They were Jews that had interbreeded with other nations. They, they weren't pure. You know anybody around you living in Kingsville that's not pure? Samaritans were people the Jews in general held in contempt. Oftentimes, God's people uh, pat themselves on the back and hold everybody else in contempt. You understand what I'm saying? It does happen. God tells us to love them, and sometimes we hold them in contempt. It's a, it's a matter of the heart. and God needs to get a hold of our hearts, right? They... They went so far, the Jews went so far as to hating and shunning the Samaritans. And Jesus, when he stands up to say where they're going to be witnesses, he says, you're going to be witnesses in Judea. I mean, in, in Jerusalem. They go, yeah! And he says, you're going to be witnesses in, in uh, Judea. And they go, all right! And he says, you're going to be witnesses in Samaria. And they go, what? They couldn't believe it. And I want to tell you something. Right here, right here in Kingsville, there are people who are different. Samaria is in Kingsville. Amen. There are people who are different. There are people for, of other religions. There are people who are impure. Maybe they're not clean. Maybe they're poor. Oh, what a what a terrible thing to be poor. Jesus said, you're going to be witnesses to them. And then he finally, he says, uh, I, I, I said here, I said here, locally, you know, we could consider Samaria, if, if we just wanted to talk about Samaria and, and forget about all the cultural differences there between the Jews and the Samaritans and just say, Samaria was a neighboring state. Samaria was a neighboring state. You know, Samaria, in that, in that respect, Samaria comes to us in the form of pilots and oil field workers and college students who come from all the other states in the Union. Somebody say amen. amen. Samaria has come to visit us and we have the opportunity without going on a trip without paying motel costs, without paying travel costs, without going, we can, we can talk to these people about Jesus. Amen? Finally, he says, unto the uttermost parts of the world. Now, the uttermost parts of the world, that's people of different languages and different cultures. People, for the most part, are different, and those people, are most, for the most part, are different in appearance and customs and religions from us. Okay? In Kingsville, in Kingsville, our mission field, we have people from all over the world who are coming to study in our university and work in our industries. Is that true? And oh, they're strange. But God loves them. And they didn't come here by accident. They might never have heard about Jesus where they're from. Nobody might ever have come up to them and said to them, I want to tell you 
the difference that Jesus Christ has made in my life. But you and I have that opportunity. And it would be a shame if all of, we've got we've got whole apartment houses over here full of foreign exchange students. It would be a shame if all of them went home and none of them came to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. See, if, if one of those guys gets saved and they go back to wherever they're from and they got Jesus in them, guess what just happened? Ritama Park Baptist Church just performed foreign missions and actually sent a missionary to the country. Am I going too slow for y'all? All right. So, we have in Kingsville every element of the Great Commission right here with us. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world meet in Kingsville, and God calls for you and I to be witnesses. Amen. Now, I would like to introduce you to our outreach team. I get to go out visiting, praise the Lord. I, I, I get to automatically be a part of the outreach team. All right? Brother Darrell is a part of our outreach team. Praise the Lord. I started to have him stand, but it might embarrass him. Brother Robert is a part of our outreach team. Sister Juanita Charles is a part of our outreach team. Sister Louise Straighten right over here is a part of our outreach team. These are people that go out visiting every week and talk to people about the Lord and try to minister to people in visitation. We have a few others that have come. We have some folks that are involved in evangelism because they got involved with the, with the PRC. Uh, Miss Sherry Turner. Uh, Miss Chris Merriman. Miss, uh, what's your name? Elia Karate. Now, Elia was a, was a witness for Christ before she ever started working for the PRC, but but these people are talking to people about the Lord on a regular basis. But the outreach team of our church consists basically of five people. Myself, Brother Darrell, Brother Robert, Sister Juanita, and Sister Louise. Once in a while we have somebody else to go out with us. But those are the regulars. I think God called all of us to be regulars, don't you? Amen. Now, I know that there's everyday things that you do outside, but uh, I, I want to extend a challenge to you. Are you ready? First of all, I would like to postpone our business meeting to the last Sunday of the month. That's two weeks from now. And second of all, I would like to invite you to come this afternoon to go out and visit Kingsville. Amen. At 4 o'clock this afternoon, I would like for all of us that would go to come to the church. Don't go out on your own. Come to the church. If you come to the church, you're going to be an encouragement to everybody else. So I want you to come to the church at 4 o'clock this afternoon... We're going we're gonna to show you what we want you to do. We're going to show you how to keep records of your, of your visits. We're going to give you the ma materials to work with. And, uh, and we're going to go out and visit. Now, here's the way it's going to work. We're going to go out two by two. Don't go out on your own. We're going to go out two by two. Now, if you have... Now, listen to me. Come to the church. But if you have a place or a street on your heart where you want to go knock on doors and visit people, we'll send you there. If you don't know where you want to go, well, we've got, we ought to just start where we're at. We've got this neighborhood back here. Now, that's my neighborhood. I've visited every home in this neighborhood at least twice. And that's not enough. 
I'll just confess it. That's not enough. Now, we've got, so, but we ought to visit this neighborhood because we're sitting in this neighborhood. Amen? We've got, uh, we've got the neighborhood right across from us right here. Not that one, Chris? No. Pasadena. We got Pasadena right over there. We got Briarwood right over there. We got Las Palomas right over here. And I didn't, I, I didn't forget it, y'all. Y'all didn't remind me. Yeah, I already had it on my list. Las Palomas right there. We also have another apartment house right down here on the corner. Uh, we're going to visit. How far we get to go depends on how many people we have. You say, Brother Gary, I'm just too timid. Well, we'll try to put you with somebody who's not so timid. Well, what if I run into somebody who speaks only Spanish? Well, then you'll give them a track in Spanish and, 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 and tell them you love them. Hmm? Unless somebody's there that speaks Spanish with you, and then they'll just switch over. I love it when I go to people's houses and they say, uh, No hablo inglés. And I say, está bien. <laughs> you know? Uh, so we're going to talk to people about Jesus. Afternoon. Yes, uh, we can invite them to our church. But we're not going to invite them to the church. We're going to invite them to Jesus. You see, Retama Park Baptist Church needs a change. And the Bible tells us, it gives us instructions here. It says, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you're going to have power from God to go out witnessing. And I want you to go and make disciples. And I want you to baptize. That means they become church members. I want you to baptize those disciples. And I want you to teach them. That means you put them in the Sunday school and the discipleship program. I, and you put them in one-on-one -on -one discipleship. God wants us to do that. You see, most of our discipleship, you know what we've been doing with discipleship? And it's not bad. It's not bad. We've been discipling each other. We've been bringing new people into the disciple program from inside the church. And the whole point of the discipleship program one-on-one -on -one, is win somebody to Christ and disciple them. Amen. So I want to challenge you. Come this afternoon at 4 o'clock. We're not going to have service tonight. We're going out visiting. Now we're not going to visit a long time. If you can visit for one hour, that's all I'm going to ask you to do. Yes, ma'am. Nursery, do you want? Sure. Yeah. Want nursery. Just, if, if we can just visit for one hour. And at the end of that hour, you can come back to the church. We'll rejoice together. Or you can go home. It doesn't matter. What we do want, we do want you to return the material and the, the information sheet that you wrote on. And we'll collate that information this week. Are you on? Are you, are you for it? Amen. You see, the biggest answer that I get when I talk to people about witnessing, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. One of the Psalms I read this week was Psalm 27. And it said this. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of a whom then shall I be afraid? I want to tell you something. If the Lord is the light, your light and your salvation, if the Lord is the strength of your life, 
then don't fear men. Fear God and do what he said. We're going to have an invitation. We're going to have an invitation. I didn't preach on salvation, but I want to tell you something. If you're here today, Jesus Christ is the only way of salvation. And if you want to know how you can be forgiven of your sins and have eternal life, I'll tell you, you have to give your life for his eternal life. But I will invite you to Jesus this morning because we won't have a service without an invitation. Will you come? Now, I'm not asking the people that are going visiting to get in this altar. That's all right. That's between you and God. We'll know at 4 o'clock this afternoon if you made that decision. Let's stand together. And if God's speaking to your heart, if you have other business to do with God, you come here to this altar. If you want to become a member of this church, come down front. We'll show you how you can become a member of the church.